In this video, I'll be making an EMI filter for a power supply. This prevents interference with other uh, electronic devices connected to mains. Here you can see the speed test running without the, the power supply connected to mains. I'm having problems with this, with this power supply because I'm using a power line internet device and it loses connection when the power supply is connected and it interferes with, with the power line device. Now you can see the speed test but with the power supply connected to mains. You can see that the download speed is way lower some, and sometimes it stutters. The upload speed seems to be similar to what it was previously. This is the power supply in question. It's a generic PSU that claims to be capable of delivering up to 400 watts, which I, which I doubt, but I can use it for some low power devices. Here you can see that on the PCB there are some unpopulated spaces that were meant to have the filtering components for an EMI filter. Here are some examples of EMI filters that you can buy. And based on this, I made my own circuit. Here you can see the circuit and don't pay attention to the coils uh, values as they are wrong. I made the coils with the wire I had and I didn't pay attention to its inductance. Here are the components that I'll be using which I took from a broken power supply. Now I'm uh, winding the wire around the, the core of the coil. I'm doing 14 turns for each half of the coil. I went with 14 turns as it was the maximum turns I could do per side with the amount of wire I had. And now the coil is done. Now that I have the coil ready, I'll be removing the wires from the, the power supply just so I can put in the coil on the holes in the PCB that are meant for the coil. I'm clearing all the holes as they had solder don't know why because there was no component there and now after placing the coil I'll be soldering it here I noticed that I forgot to remove the enamel coating from the wire so I had to remove the coil again sand the coating and then remove it with some help to remove it with some uh, solder and after that the coil was ready to go in again after soldering in the coil I started uh, working on putting in the the X2 capacitor, which was fairly easy to do. Then I started making some extensions for the other capacitor's legs as they were too short. I made them with some thinner uh, animal coated uh, wire as it was the easiest thing to use. That I had on hand. The 
Then after making the, the extensions, I put solder on the other ends so I could solder the capacitors there, which I covered with tape so I could hold them easier. Now I start putting it halfway in as I'm not soldering every connection, I'm just checking for shorts to ground. The beeping you can hear now is when I touch both grounds on each side, so that's okay. And then as I try other components, no component is shorting to ground, so it seems to be wired the right way. After checking for shorts, I decided to put in a fuse just to be safe because this is some experimental things I, I'm doing and I'm not pretty sure if this thing <laughs> would fail or not, so I decided to be safe and put a fuse, which I'll be changing, changing later for a smaller one as it fits better in the holes in the PCB. Now I plugged in the power supply just to test voltages and see if anything has changed or if it's working good. And as you can see my multimeter screen, the voltages are okay. We are getting 5 volts in the standby wire and that's enough testing for me. Then I'll be placing the foam that came and then I'll be changing the fuse for a smaller one as I said before. Um, with all this done the PSU should be ready to put back together. Now I'll be doing this internet speed, speed test again, just to see if adding the filter improved things or they are as before. And as we can see, the ping is way lower and the downloads, download speed seems to be the same or around the same as before. So this filter worked. This project seems to be a success, a success. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.